Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to our very, very special full moon in Leo circle with our beautiful special guest, the lovely Jessica Amos, a much loved teacher who many of you already know from our Insight Timer community. Hi, Esther. Hello, Mar Martez. Great to see you, love. Martez says, hello, Prima Jessica and everybody. I would love to invite everyone to pop your name in the chat box and let us know where you're calling in from geographically and also any intentions that you are bringing to our full moon circle today. Um, it's going to be a super special call. We have Jessica Amos, whom I'm super honored and excited to interview on our call today. And I know that many of you have been following her for years, and this is going to be a really special opportunity to hear about her courageous soul journey that led her to where she is today. And it's it's a very, very profound journey. So lots of inspiration in store on our call today. And we have Liz from Philly, and we've got some hearts coming in. Hi, Liz. Welcome, beauty. And Martez is calling from Wales, United Kingdom. And Sandy is calling in from Nelson. Sandy is sending love to uh, both Prima and Jessica. Thank you, Sandy. And Lisa is from Seattle. Amazing. Jessica is from Oregon, so not far away from you. And Annie from Chicago. Welcome, Annie. And Esther is in Hampshire, UK, releasing resistance. Beautiful. Okay, well, as we are waiting for the rest of our friends to pop on the call, I would love to just invite us to ground in a little bit and settle in by taking a few deep breaths into our hearts. So just placing one hand over top of your beautiful, radiant heart and taking deep breath in. Let's breathe in for a count of four. Hold at the top. And just tuning into anything you are ready to release in this full moon, anything that's ready to go and release with a sigh for a count of seven. And another deep breath in for a count of four. Holding that fresh prana, life force energy, letting it circulate around your heart, your entire beautiful body vessel. And exhaling anything that is no longer serving you with a sigh for a count of seven. Ah. One more like that, just really dropping into your own body, your own vessel, and your own beautiful breath. Breathing into your heart for four. Holding at the top, just allowing yourself to relax and settle into the safe, sacred container. And exhaling any anxiety, any tension, any old energy that's ready to go. Whew. And let's just do one more like that for good measure. Slow, gentle, attuned breath into your sweet, loving heart. Feeling that fresh life force energy lighting up your entire body and energy field and releasing the things that are ready to be released with a full commitment exhale. Ah. Beautiful. Welcome to everyone who just popped on as we were doing our breathing. Welcome Deb from Arizona. Amazing. Welcome, Debbie. And Monique, so good to see you, beautiful sister. Uh, Monique is calling in from um, Orange County, I believe, Long Beach. Welcome, love. And Monique says, happy to be here with you all. Happy to have you here, Monique. And Carrie is from West Plains. Welcome, Carrie. And hi, Debbie. Okay, well, without further ado, I would love to introduce our amazing special guest, someone whom I deeply admire and am inspired by, and I know that many of you also feel the same way. The lovely Jessica Amos, who has been teaching on this app for many years now, and I'm sure that several of you on the call have already attended her live streams, listened to her beautiful bedtime stories and guided meditations, and participated in some of her courses. She has 10 courses here on Insight Timer. So I'd love if you would press that little heart button and let us know, those of you who have already had the pleasure and the good fortune of interacting with Jessica's prolific 
uh, and abundant offerings here on this platform. I see lots of hearts. And if you might actually be willing to take a moment and pop in the chat, what is your favorite one of Jessica's tracks or courses? I myself have done two of Jessica's courses. I've done the uh, inner child healing one, which was very, very touching. And I've also done the boundaries course, which both of which I highly recommend. And I see lots of hearts coming in. Mm -hmm. Sandy says, I love your seasons courses, Jessica. Amazing. And so anyone else who has listened to any of her bedtime stories or her tracks, please feel free to let us know in the chat. And there's many of you that will be meeting Jessica for the first time. So I would love to share with you a little bit about her inspiring background. Uh, Jessica Amos is a much loved teacher from our Insight Timer community. Having spent most of her life struggling with severe anxiety, Jessica came to meditation as a last ditch effort to find deep inner peace and happiness. And it changed her life for the better forever. Jessica will share about her profound journey from being raised by two ex-convicts to finding her soul path as a much loved teacher, horse creator, TEDx speaker, and guide uh, with over well over 1.2 million listens to her offerings. Really, really an extraordinary journey and how she was able to find the gift in those shadows, how she was able to you know, persevere through these challenges and have these breakthroughs to be the beautiful leader and lighthouse that she is for our community now. And Jessica's story is both inspiring and deeply touching. So we will be getting into that shortly. And I wanted to just highlight what her courses include. They include a course on shadow work, a course on coming into a thriving relationship with money, a course on conscious relationship transitions, four courses, one for each of the seasons, then there's the inner child uh, course, the boundaries course, and I think I may have gotten them all, hopefully. So with that, um, I would love, and Monique says, Jessica's course on mending a broken heart helped me get through a painful divorce. I see the light of that relationship now, thanks to her teachings. I'm so grateful. Beautiful. Amazing. And who here is just meeting Jessica for the first time? You're welcome to pop that in the chat as well. So on that note, I want to pass the talking stick over to our beautiful guest, Jessica, so that she can lead us in one of her amazing meditations. So you get to experience it for yourself. Maggie says, yes. And Amy says first, Annie says first time, incredible. Well, you are in for a really big treat today and a lot of inspiration. And so before we dive into the meditation, I will just share one thing, which is the format for our call. We will have uh, the first section of the call will be a meditation and then a beautiful poetry reading. And then Jessica will share her profound story. And then the call will end with a full moon reading which is really potent to help us work with these energies of this Leo full moon. And Jenny says, hi, Prema and Jessica, first time meeting Jessica, incredible. And Martez says, first time for me too, wow. That's great, Martez, I'm, you're, you're really gonna, I think you're really gonna enjoy this, um, this session today. So, okay, I'm gonna pass it over to Jessica to lead us in a meditation and help us really drop in for everything that we will be receiving today. Thank you so much, Prima Gaia, for having me here. And everyone who's here, I actually felt very emotional. Like I could just start crying <laughs> hearing you read that bio. You you wrote that bio very beautifully. beautifully. So thank you for that. And everyone who's here, it's good to meet uh, some new people and some familiar, familiar faces as well, too. Um, let's, yeah, let's drop into a little meditation and then we'll... We'll continue practicing this opening of our hearts and communing together in this beautiful space. Um, for me, there's a garbage truck that just pulled up outside that's beeping. So I love this because it allows us to just be uh, exactly where we are with all that's happening around us. So wherever you are today, Whatever is unfolding for you, whatever came before this moment, 
whatever you know is coming after. I invite you just to gather up all of your energy, all of your awareness, all of yourself back into your body. And feeling the edges of yourself as you pull yourself back into your own energy field, gathering up 100% of yourself, all the places you've been mentally reaching outward, pulling all of that back in, and anything you've been carrying that maybe doesn't belong to you, letting it go. So feeling yourself fully here, being aware of your physical body, the edges of yourself where your skin is holding you together, feeling your skin where your clothing is touching your skin. where it's loose, where it's tight. Feeling where your skin is exposed to the air on your face, your neck, your hands. Being very aware that your body can exist nowhere but the present moment. Your body is always present. So allowing yourself to just drop into the present moment through your body. Feeling the gentleness of your breath moving in and out, naturally, natural pace. Now your belly rises and falls, your chest. Being aware of your heart beating in your chest. Whether you can feel it or not, just knowing that your heart is right here beating for you and only for you. The first sign of life, this heartbeat of yours that has not stopped beating for you. Your heartbeat that can only beat for you in the present moment. It cannot beat for you yesterday or for you tomorrow. It can only beat right now. So just sending some gratitude to your heart. Thank you, dear heart, for beating for me and only for me. And for this breath moving in and out of your body, breathing for you in the present moment, naturally, automatically, the generosity of your body supporting you. and noticing where you could bring some softness and ease into your body, any aches or pains, whether that's physical ache or pain, mental ache or pain, or an emotional ache or pain. Choosing to soften around all that's here. Feeling again the edges of your body, where you end and the world out there begins. Being aware of your heartbeat, your breath moving in and out. Ah, oh, 
and softening. In the softening of your heart space and your belly and your hips, the whole front of your body, the tenderest, most tender part of your body, your belly, your front, your heart space. Allowing the front of your body to soften as you feel the strength of your spine reaching up from your tailbone all the way up through the back of your neck. You are held up, you are held together. Ah, oh, now we can relax and soften. From this place of belonging to yourself once again, of having all of your energy belong to you, taking a few moments here to just be quiet and still. and allowing all that's here to be here. As I read you some words. Our true home is in the present moment. To live in the present moment is a miracle. The miracle is not to walk on water. The miracle is to walk on the green earth in the present moment, to appreciate the peace and beauty that are available now. Peace is all around us, in the worlds, in nature, and within us, in our bodies and our spirits. Once we learn to touch this peace, we will be healed and transformed. It's not a matter of faith. It is a matter of practice. Mm. So feeling these words, recognizing the peace that is always here within us, in nature and in the world outside of us as well. And bringing that with us into this beautiful time of connection as a community, breathing in that peace and breathing out peace. And taking your time to arrive back here as it feels good for you. Mm. <laughs> mm. That was so perfect. Mm. If you enjoyed that meditation, just encouraging you guys to pop some hearts. I see some hearts coming in. And Iga, great to see you, love. Iga is sending hugs, hearts, namastes all kinds of good emojis. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Carrie says, thank you. Iga says, beautiful. Jenny says, thank you. Maggie says, calm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, thank you. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well, for those of you who just joined during the meditation, today is a very special full moon circle with our beautiful guest, Jessica Amos. We're going to be doing an interview in which Jessica will be sharing about her courageous life journey, <clears throat> which has led her to where she is today. And I see a couple more comments popping in. Martez says, thank you so much, Jessica, for a wonderful infinite silence space for us, dear Jessica. 
And Annie says, thank you for this gift. Carrie says, love the birds. Those are, those are coming from, from here. They're so beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I felt them too. Just really being with us mm -hmm. you can hear them right now. Um, and Liz says, thank you. And Carrie's dropping some hearts and love. <laughs> okay. Well, I would love to start our interview. I feel that this is kind of a divine, divine synchronicity that our interview today is about on some level, the journey of coming into right relationship with your power, which my sense of you is that you've been a wise one ever since you were little and then just coming back into the recognition of who you are, you know, the wisdom that you have access to. And our reading right now, our reading for this full moon in Leo is about coming back into right relationship with our personal power. And this full moon in Leo is about really highlighting where we may have um, given up our power as or hidden our power as a survival strategy when we were young and the journey of then coming back into right relationship with it. So I would love to hear about your about your childhood experiences and some of the pivotal moments that created imprints or feelings that led you on onto a healing path. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. Uh, well, you and I talked a little bit before we did this call and you had asked her like, have you, where have you shared your story? Like, where can people <laughs> you know, hear your story? And I realized I, you know, I, it gets shared, but not so much in this, like in this really strong, like direct sense. So I thought maybe I'll just start at the beginning and I'll give you sort of the overview, uh, because I think that our stories are very powerful. I think some of you might relate, even if it's not your exact story, it's the story might be different, but the, the heart of what we often feel, and it does, it is where many of my courses come from. So as you mentioned uh, in my bio, I was raised by two ex-convicts. My um, biological father had died when I was 10 months old. And my mom um, had been an addict before she had me. And so after he died, she had kind of gone back to those ways. So pre-memory, pre-memory, I had lost a parent. And then pre-memory as a young child, my mom, we lived in cars. She would leave me with strangers, you know, and there was sort of like a lot of abandonment in my pre-memory years that I'm aware happened, but I don't actually remember. Um, until finally my grandparents stepped in and I went to live with them. So when I came into um, consciousness, you know, around the age of four, when I started having my first memories, they were with my grandparents actually in a, in a stable, loving home environment. So those were sort of my early memory formative years. So my first memories of childhood were actually quite quite loving and secure, even though the early years hadn't been. <laughs> um, and then my mom, my mom had been in, in prison during those years that I was with my grandparents. And that was part of why they stepped, they had to step in. When she got out of prison, she, um, she was a born again Christian. She had become a born again Christian while in prison, which is a very, very strong way to get saved, I think. So she came out, uh, she was saved by Christ, uh, started going to uh, support groups where she met my stepdad, who had also just gotten out of prison. He had been in San Quentin uh, in California, which is one of the most hardcore prisons, I think, in America. He'd been in there for a decade. Um, and he had also been born again uh, Christian while in prison. So they got out of, they both got out of prison, met, my grandparents handed me over to my mom and uh, she got pregnant. They felt horribly guilty because they're new Christians. So they got married, my mom and my stepdad. And so really quickly around the age of six or seven, I went from this stable, beautiful home to like a new mom, a new dad, a new baby brother, <laughs> a new home, a new environment. And mm -hmm. from there, it's really where I noticed I started to like really start to be kind of pushed out of myself and like my survival mechanisms really started to to kick in and again if I didn't realize this um until much later looking back and starting to do some more healing work 
at how that's when like the slow separation from myself began as a way to protect, you know, as children, we're such like adaptable little beings. Like we have these little spirits that will do what we need to do in order to get through our circumstances. So it was a pretty intense environment growing up um, with two ex-convicts. So they're already pretty intense people who have now put their, they had both been addicts as well too before that. So their, their energy that had gone into all that addiction before was now going into their religious fanaticism, so to speak. And it was just, so there was like all kinds of abuses, the mental, the emotional, the spiritual is also very, my stepdad was pretty violent. So there was a lot of violence in the home, um, not necessarily towards me, but I witnessed a lot of violence towards my mother. So that was, that was difficult as a child to feel helpless and to, to feel that. So that was, you know, kind of really the general environment in which I, in which I grew up mm -hmm. and, um, I went through some rebellious years, but that was just, it wasn't working out for me. So I eventually dedicated my life to Christ at the age of 16. I decided to really dig into just doing what was the easiest path in order to get love from my family, you know, to be loved and accepted. Um, yeah. So I, I committed to that, that path for a good number of years into my early adulthood and then it was when I had my daughter. It was actually when I got pregnant with her at the age of 24. Um, I'd gotten married at 19. Um, we got pregnant at 24. I was pregnant and um, things started to change inside. That was like the first time it was. And then it was once I had her and I'd gone back to visit my family a couple of times and I can feel myself feeling emotional now. It was like, this might have been normal and okay for me, but to bring my child into it just absolutely changed everything. And that's when I say like my awakening started to really happen for me was and chills. Yeah, I <laughs> I do too. Yeah, like, yeah. I can't give her anything I can't give myself. So I can't if I'm bringing her into this environment, I'm passing it on to her. And so that's when I really, um, I had, I was still going to church at the time, but I'd kind of quit going to church, but I had this sort of mentor that I had been going to like, um, uh, I'd been going to adult children of addicts like classes. So he was like a pastor, but he was also this, this mentor that he's the one that really helped me with first learning to set boundaries. He's the first person that ever said to me, I told him about something that had happened with my stepdad, with my daughter there, my infant daughter, my stepdad, and this whole thing. I told him this whole thing and I was just breaking down, just like, oh, I should have known better, you know? And he looks at me and he goes, Jessica, it's not your fault. Like you didn't do anything wrong. And that was the first time at the age of 25 that anyone ever told me that all the things that had happened to me and all the ways that, you know, it wasn't my fault. Right. And so these imprints that you've been carrying for so long that they weren't mm -hmm. real or that the way that you had internalized them wasn't real. Totally. It's such a revelation. Totally. Like yeah. life changing because you've been carrying this way of seeing things or an operating system. And then someone's like, no, that the way that that was internalized is fault is faulty. And you're like, what? I I've didn't even know on this for as long as I can remember. How can that be? So it's like an unwinding of all of that. Totally. Right. Yeah, just my mind was being blown constantly. And then I was also in deep states of grief because for right. the first time I was acknowledging, I didn't even know that I had come from an abusive home. Like I didn't even know, like it didn't right. even- It becomes normalized on. because the codependent patterns just are kind of totally. normalized. So I had codependency, people pleasing, lack of boundaries, super, super low self-esteem, body dysmorphia, depression, um, what do you call it when you're dis dissociation? <laughs> you know? All the above. All right. of it. Just like yeah. totally. <laughs> and I was, I was anxious all the time, stressed all the time. Anger is so much anger, like so much anger and rage and passive aggression. I couldn't say what I really needed. So I had to manipulate to get what I needed. I had problems with lying. 
I lied a lot, even about things I didn't need to lie about because I just it was protecting. So th this is right. the <laughs> this is the the mud in which everything I do now works off of. You know, wow. is is shifting all of these unconscious things um, mm -hmm. into conscious and shifted behaviors. Um, so anyway, that's the story. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I just want to, I just want to reflect back also, I've, I have dove deep into like pre and perinatal birth, uh, healing and research and studies. And I don't know if you, if you're familiar with, with this work, but they've actually done, um, videos of ultrasounds of a fetus in the womb where the father is raising his voice at the mother. And there's a video and the fetus actually goes to the back of the womb and just contracts oh, like wow. that. It's amazing. Wow. It's an Italian, yeah. Italian video. I heard, I heard about it from um, a pre and perinatal educator named um, Myrna Martin. Anyway, all that to say, I believe that even though you didn't have memories and I believe for myself also, even though we didn't have memories that are cognitive in the womb or in those early years, um, the pre and perinatal studies have shown that the young children that are like two and three can actually talk about things that happened in the womb. And they, they actually have shown, have, have shown that there's actual memory of those things. So that imprinting and those formative years, like even though those years with your grandparents were so harmonious and peaceful, those formative years, there's a lot of uh, a lot of memory that's happening sort of somatically and, and, and body memory. And so um, it makes perfect sense that you would have anger and rage, even from coming back from being one year old, two years old, three years old, not able to speak up for yourself. It's amazing how, you know, even a tiny little child or even a pet, like any mammal or any, any living being instinctually knows when they're being violated. Uh, it's it's amazing to see even the smallest child or or a little pet will will know, and so all of that I feel gets stored, and then it does come out as passive aggressive, and it does come out as anger, and then then it becomes the work to do, like you teach in your shadow work course. Okay, how do we unpack this? How can we unpack all this anger and this rage and actually make medicine out of it? And that's something that you've been you know extraordinary at doing. And so, uh, so the shadow work course, I'm guessing was born from the time, uh, from that turning point moment at around 25 to probably a good decade after that, I'm sure there was a lot of shadow work. Is that true? Yes. And it wasn't called that back then when I was, right. it you wasn't know, when like I first started all of this work there was no there was none of it there, there was no inner child healing like all of my courses all these names and titles we have for things even boundaries right it wasn't like these were like titles we were putting on things they weren't in the mainstream they were just what's happening and for me shadow work was is it's really fucking hard like it's grief it's jar it's like really going into that pain, yeah. that pain that's been there, the pain that we're carrying pre-memory with memory, the guilt around it, the shame around it, things we've been carrying that don't belong to us. And the shadow work, I call it a shadow work toolkit because it's really about me offering all the practices that I know to do. So for mind, body, heart, soul, like on every level, like find there's there are all the practices and there's, I don't even think I got all the practices in there. Honestly, there's 12 days and I did not even get all the practices in there. There's so many ways to go about walking this path and we have to find what works for us and it changes over time. So, you know, we're having to, one practice might really serve us in, in certain, certain area while for a time and then we outgrow it and we're needing we're needing to move through it so I see it almost like moving through doorways or you know levels of you know moving up and through and around um but I will say that the shadow lands are a place now for myself that I'm deeply much more deeply comfortable in I still have yes. bouts of sadness I still have bouts of depression that will hit me of self-hate that that shows up like that stuff is still 
there but the practices kind of like this poem I read like it's not about faith it's about practice it's about showing up the practices um, have helped soften around it so that's a big part of what I like to teach too is when we're living in a small container and we're really restricted there's not much room but as we expand our capacity through practice we're able to hold more of it so it's not necessarily that these things are like suddenly easier but they feel a little bit softer because we're mm. expanding the container in which we can hold them and i think that's really um i try i i it's very important to me that we stay connected to this human existence it's part of what it is to be here as humans um mm. is it's kind of like uh there's a poem by rilke that goes that everything happened to you beauty and terror, just keep going. No feeling is final. It's part of the practice is allowing for all of it mm -hmm. and moving through it, knowing none of it's final. Yeah. I have so many questions to ask you. So <laughs> um, what can you share about one of the biggest breakthrough synchronicity like grace moments that you had where you were just like oh my gosh like you know like one of those like satori moments where for, for that moment in time everything just makes sense or just everything feels divinely orchestrated have you had one like that that you could share with us um it's funny this is the first one that comes to mind and it i don't know it's probably not what people would expect but um i was in a bowling alley um with i was I was with my husband at the time and another family and our kids and we were there bowling and I had been doing a lot of deep work and I didn't know it at the time, but I was about a year out from getting divorced and I had been doing another round of, of work and I really kind of didn't even want to be in that bowling alley, but I had been, um, I was just in another level of doing some inner work of owning my stuff and suddenly, suddenly, I could just, I feel it as suddenly as I, I don't know if I was bowling a ball down the thing or I'd just let it go. And I turned around, I just was struck, like struck, like God moment of like, I was filled with absolute joy. Like I was in one of a very difficult time in my life. You know, again, I didn't even know I was probably getting divorced soon and life was hard but I was just absolutely struck like lightning with, I felt like I was floating. I could skip, I could sing. The smile could not be wiped off my face. I was just absolutely infused with pure delight and joy and bliss. And I was just so happy and joyful. And it was, those aren't even the words to describe it, but it was just this moment of like an ordinary moment with, doing an ordinary thing with yeah it, there wasn't something grand that had happened mm -hmm. um but I found that that I started to experience that more and I still experience it more as I practice in the daily living and I think that that's I don't know that's the thing that comes to mind is moments like that yeah. where almost like the the heavens parted for a moment and there was this experience of grace almost like a premonition of what was to come as you step forward and forward on your soul path and yeah. step into you know your dharma and your sacred gifts and all the fulfillment that comes from that it's almost like there was a taste of the grace to come totally yeah and it just it just fell on me it didn't like you know I wasn't asking for it and it was profound. Yeah. So I'd also love to ask you what was one of the, oh, actually I have an even better question. <laughs> what was the first moment when someone reflected back to you, Jessica, you're a wisdom keeper. You're here to lead people and to shine your light. And when is the first moment that someone reflected that to you where it actually landed for you? Oh, wow. Um, a couple things 
come to mind because it's never been put that way. <laughs> like the people in my life are just very, you know, um, two moments come to mind. The first is just when I was, it was part of that during that, uh, my second awakening period around bowling alley time, um, I had been going to some yoga classes at a studio and putting on storytelling events and asking them if I could hang my posters there. And my teacher who owned the studio, she just came to me and she goes, would you like to teach here? And I'm like, I mean, I'm not a yoga teacher. I just go to yoga classes. I meditate on my own. I go, well, yeah, actually I would. <laughs> I think I would maybe like, I could maybe offer some meditation classes. And she goes, I just, I think that, and that was kind of the first moment. And that just, that was it. It just took someone, she just came to me and asked. So she it didn't, wasn't put like, Hey, I think you have the, the asking, the inviting me was that message of, because she's extremely powerful person herself. So um, there's that, but then there's also this um, framed piece of uh, artwork that I have from this. Um, I I can't. I don't. When I was a child and I lived with my grandparents, they had some friends, and one of their friends, there were a couple. The the elderly gentleman had was passing away. He was dying, and we'd go visit him, and I would draw him pictures and bring him pictures. And his wife, after he passed, framed, took one of his framed pieces of art and wrote on the back of it. And she wrote this beautiful blessing. And I believe she spoke into my life back when I was five years old. And I still have the art, the note from her and this piece of art from this old man, um, where she was just like telling me that my, I have a beautiful light to shine that I bring joy and love into every room that I'm in and to keep shining my light. And I remember always having that with me as a kid, I would read it sometimes and I still read it now sometimes as a reminder. So it was spoken into my life by virtual stranger um, that has continued, that message has continued to be with me now. Amazing. I love how you felt that it was being sent directly back across timelines to your five-year-old to receive that and keep that message with her. That's beautiful. I have one more question. And I also wanted to say for those who need to pop off early, I really want to encourage you to pop on to Jessica's teacher profile and click the green follow button. And then if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of her homepage, on her teacher profile, you can find her group. It's called the Stay With Yourself Circle. I'm in there and would love to invite you to join us in there as well. And also, if you want to go deeper with Jessica, you can check out her website link on her teacher profile as well. So the last question, and I see there's a bunch of comments of lots of lovely people who've just joined us, and then also some reflections, which I will get to in a moment. The last question is, if you can share one of the most touching, heart-melting moments uh, of your dharmic path as a teacher, as a guide, one of the most beautiful, mm, touching, moving moments, or one of the most beautiful messages you ever received from someone on Insight Timer, or a moment where you just felt like, this has been so worth it. You know, all of these challenges have led me to be the me that I am today. And just anything along those lines that you feel called to share. Yeah. Um, I can't say there's one moment. I will say though that, ah, I get emotional talking about these things. I will say, speaking to the Insight Timer community specifically. Um, when I go into my course classrooms and the sharing that happens there, the deep sharing that people do, like some of you who are here have shared stories with me um, from what has come up for you just by going through a course, all of the courses, <laughs> um, I get, I get to hear your stories. I get to hear what you've been through and the work that you've done and the way you're healing yourself 
whenever I go into even just reviews on tracks or meditations, I get a lot of little kids that listen to my bedtime stories. And I think like how, how beautiful it is. I get to be a part of their childhood and I get to love them by reading them stories. Um, so I'd say that's probably the most powerful, meaningful thing for me is that I get to offer through my teaching what it is I have needed. And so I am healed through offering what it is I've needed to others who I know also need it. And I think that's that's what feels most powerful for me. And I get to I get to have that almost every day. So um, I think that's a beautiful, probably the last thing to end on too, is just um, really grateful for this community, grateful to meet you and other teachers who share the same heart. And then all of you who are here, who, um, who feel this and know it and that we together know that we're not alone. I really think the burden and the he- is eased and the healing happens together as I heal, you heal, as you heal, I heal and, and together it's softer. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Creating a softer world for us all. So beautiful. And I want to acknowledge there are so many beautiful comments in the chat here. Um, I will just read a couple of them. Martez says, you are human sunshine, Jessica. Thank you so much. I am touched by your loving words. Sandy says, thank you, Jessica, with hearts. Uh, Sir Khan says, what is Jessica's last name? It's Amos, A-M-O-S. And Kelly says, Jessica, stay with yourself group is very warm and welcoming. She goes live on Monday mornings. Beautiful. Yes. Every Monday, I think it is. uh, Stay with yourself circles. And... Um, Carrie says, okay, okay. Um, let's see some, uh, Sandy says bowling can be life-changing indeed. (laughs) 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 And Jenny says, so well put having more capacity to hold the shadows, bringing more softness to it. So I want to acknowledge everyone for your beautiful comments. There's actually scrolls of comments and I will be sharing, uh, uh, some screenshots with Jessica so she gets to read and savor all of your loving words. So on that note, I would love to invite you to pop on to Jessica's course uh, teacher profile, check out her 10 prolific courses and her abundance of guided meditations, bedtime stories, and stay in touch with Jessica by making sure to click the green follow button and popping into her stay with yourself circle. So thank you so, so much, Jessica. This has been really, really beautiful. I'd love to invite you guys to drop some hearts just to let Jessica know how much her share has been appreciated. And I am going to spotlight my video in a moment and we're gonna transition over to the full moon reading, but be sure to take a moment to follow Jessica and pop into her group. And send her some hearts as we get ready to say goodbye to our beautiful guest.